Hey guys, EST here, and boy is it overdue for me to put a winter emergency kit in my car. So I thought, hey, why not show you guys what I'm putting in it? And I was going to keep it as uh, tidy as this little bag right here, hand for scale. So not very big, maybe eh, 18 inches, I don't know, maybe two feet, I don't know, pretty small. Kind of floppy, you can kind of throw it anywhere, you know, fit in a foot well, but... Uh, well, you should see the pile of stuff that didn't fit in it to the right of it. So we're going to have to upgrade to uh, another one. And I got both of these for like under a dollar at the Goodwill bins. I think if I got them retail, they'd be even lower. And this one's like a Bella Rosso, or Russo, pardon me. That's uh, so pretty spacey. I mean, this is probably just short of three feet. And it's a little, uh, a little dirty because I was hauling firewood in it. And then I broke the strap because it's plastic. So it's not that nice. But, uh, well, it's not like you go hiking with this. This is just to be a container to throw in my car all at once. So in no particular order, we've got paper towels, because you might have to uh, clean off you know, your windshield, your mirrors, whatever, and uh, I wouldn't just stuff a roll in there necessarily, especially because uh, the inside of your car can get wet. I would uh, take them apart, individually put them into like maybe fold them in squares or just put them in a Ziploc bag like that flat. So uh, you know, just kind of fold them on the, on the creases there and you're all set. Next up, we got a backup pair of sunglasses. I got these bulk for dirt cheap. I think it was like four or five bucks a bag. I'll give you one guess where I got them. You guys know I do resale. So I'll just have to uh, pick a pair. I think I'll uh, look for ones that are polarized and then put them in a nice case and then stuff them in the bag. I mean, if you've ever heard of this thing called snow blindness, I mean, boy, if you had to walk from your car even for five minutes, you'd either have to do it with your eyes closed if the sun is out or I don't know. You are going absolutely nowhere without sunglasses. So I always have spare pairs all over my car. Next up, this one's a little controversial, but uh, just like a little backup battery. Uh, this one's like a single 18650 cell, and you can charge a phone off it. And then this one's uh, 2,000 milliamp hours, so it could charge like half my phone or something. Uh, it's got, uh, you could stick it somewhere, so that's kind of cool. Um, but it's got the wireless charging, which I don't even use. But this is on clearance. got it for like six bucks because the capacity is just garbage. So, uh, you know, these are the two that I wouldn't mind damaging due to, you know, wacky temperatures, but I've never heard of low temperatures uh, killing a full lithium battery, and I've never heard of them causing it to light on fire. So for what I paid for these, which was free and close to it, I wouldn't care if they failed after a year. I also wouldn't rely on them, and that's why we've got... Uh, Right here, it's a 120 watt inverter. You can see it's got the AC plug, but then it also has a USB 3.1 amp, which I barely even believe that. Usually two is the standard, but okay. 10 watt plus capable charger right here. So it uh, goes right into the cigarette lighter. But what if you blew a fuse or your ECU blew up? Well, you're going to want the type inverter that goes straight to the battery. You just clamp it right on and there you go. You know, just in case. And this one is kind of beat up and used, but I got it for seven bucks at the pawn shop. In fact, I think it was like, five bucks on this side but uh it doesn't have the usb pass through so if you can get one get one with a usb charger and then an ac so it's like a usb 12 volt pass through and then ac it's the easiest thing ever this put in a fuse and some basic handling components and it's fine but yeah the ones with the uh, jumper cables on it and an external fuse in case it blows is really nice also you should just have spare fuses in your car regardless just fyi but both of these could run a laptop, charge a phone, even just kind of diagnose the battery because they'll make a, a whistling sound if it's below, I think, 10.4 volts. Also, um, I didn't picture it here because it's already in my car, but just a basic little, you know, garbage multimeter like the ones you get at uh, the cheapo stores for like, I don't know, six bucks. Those are nice to diagnose, just basic battery stuff. You just check the voltage and a couple other things you can check, you know, relays and, you know, if you know how to do that. Next up, no surprise here, <laughs> gonna need some... Uh, antifreeze uh, isopropyl alcohol it's i think 100 percent with uh i think this has some kind of fuel injector cleaner in it too so there you go you should put this in like when you fill up and on a full tank but i have had it where my injector started sucking up ice and i put this in waited a couple hours and the car started fine so speaking of things that don't freeze <laughs> whole thing of windshield washer fluid that's good down to i think like negative 40 or something it says on it oh negative 35 yeah uh if you run out of this and you're on the highway you're driving behind anything or it's snowing i mean you're gonna get the salt spray it's gonna you know start evaporating the, the water and then you get salt residue on your windshield can't see anything i've had trips where i had to squirt this like every 60 seconds and i ran out and i'm just like oh my god like i'm gonna have to pull over the shoulder i saw an exit i pulled over on the exit wiped it with like the inside of my jacket and a little bit of snow that melted and then made it to the gas station and bought this so that was almost a tow i had to pay for so yeah, have this. Definitely have this. Don't count on your oil change people to top it off because first of all, they don't usually use very good stuff. And secondly, sometimes they don't always do it. 
Next up, a little controversial one, I guess. is very optional, most expensive item on the list, but I have it, so why not? It's the scope I use at the gun range to see if I hit stuff. So, uh, I mean, 8 to 24 by 40. Yeah, it's a nice variable optic. It, it'll just let you see the distance. This is a nice thing to have, or, you know, set of cheap binoculars or whatever. Next up, coffee filters, especially the uh, paper cone style, because they just kind of stay in a cone, so you don't have to hold it as well. And this is uh, instead of bottled water, because it's going to freeze, and that's fine, but it takes a ton of energy to unfreeze it, and it might freeze and unfreeze, freeze and unfreeze, which will get, like, weird things happening with the plastic. It might burst. I mean, I, I just don't like liquids and water in my car, and we've already got the windshield washer fluid. So this is in case you had to melt snow that's just on the ground. It looks white but you never know what's in it, any kind of particulates, any kind of dirt, any kind of salt that's sprayed onto it. I mean, salt usually dissolves, it'll still be kind of nasty, but this is at least just a basic little thing. These cost like nothing. I think this was like three bucks. Yeah, these are nice. These can go down to a pretty low micron amount. So obviously I'm not throwing this many in, I'm throwing maybe like 10, but uh, yeah, if you had to melt some snow or drink it or whatever, yeah, it's like unlimited water right here. And an actual water filter would be a good idea too, but once you use it once, uh, if you suck water through it and then it goes down to freezing, it's going to rip apart the, the little membranes in the filter or whatever, because you know, ice crystals, and then you can't use it again. You can, but you'll suck up a bunch of particulates and nastiness through it. So you just have to know that if you use a water filter outdoors one time in the winter and don't immediately return it to above 32 degrees, it is busted. So next up, I mean, pretty obvious, spare hat. It does have to be a Packer hat. Yes, I know I'm going to get that question. It will not function if it's not a Packer hat, obviously. And then we got some spare gloves. Uh, but these are touch-through gloves. They let me operate a smartphone or any other touchscreen while wearing them. Very, very, very important. And then we got just my warmest shirt. It's a Sonoma sweater. It's got some holes in it, whatever, you know. Very, very, very warm. Obviously, warm clothes, pretty obvious. I mean, throwing a jacket in there. There we go, cool. And uh, next up, big old 10-pack of hand warmers. Uh, I think it's actually 20 of them because it's uh, 10 pairs. And uh, it's got, like, two seals on it. We got the outer seal and then the inner seal each, and it's eight hours a piece. Next up, just some uh, warmer socks, you know, in case you had to walk somewhere, put them in your boots. That's a little extra layer of uh, water protection there. Uh, I got these, too, so uh, I got them in an auction for next to nothing. It was some huge lot I paid, like, five bucks for, so... Uh, yeah, I'm Mr. Acquire It For Cheap. If you haven't seen that video about my, my tips, definitely check that out. Oh, we got some Dolphin Waterproof Gloves. So they're uh, absolute antiques, but they are blaze orange. I'm not sure if my camera's even picking this up right, but they are like absolutely radioactive colored. So uh, that's really nice. I like that. You know, one, they're waterproof. And then two, they're extremely bright. So you could use this as a signal. Like if you're getting kind of buried in like six inches of snow and you might think, Oh, well, I don't want to get hit. You know, I'm on the shoulder, but it's, you know, out in a rural area or something. Snowplow might hit you. You know, cop car is looking for you. Might go right past you. Put this on, like, your antenna or something. Or, like, the highest point on your car. Put it on your mirror. And uh, you got a pretty good chance of being seen. Now, you could just put, like, an outright, like, flag with, like, a little bendy flag pole. Those are, like, two bucks at the hardware store with a big neon flag on it. Same color. That would be a good idea. But this is kind of dual purpose, so... You know, whatever. Didn't really see the need to do that. Then we got just a basic uh, face cover. I, if you have, like, a real one instead of just a handkerchief, that'd be a good idea. But uh, breathing in cold air, if you had to walk somewhere for, like, you know, a mile, half a mile, something reasonable, even three miles, who knows? Because you're like, oh, I know there's a gas station and exit. I could just walk to get something or walk to get help because, I don't know, they knocked out power to the cell phone tower. I don't know. You don't have to think of what happens, you just have to know that your cell phone isn't always available. You don't have to know the why, you just have to know what you have to do about it. I always say that on this channel. So this will just help your breathing a little bit. It's not much, I'd almost want two of them or a thicker one. Um, I do have a thicker one, but it's actually too difficult to breathe through, but you'll be breathing in like hot air, it just kind of works like that. If you have just a normal ski mask, that's not a bad idea too, but you can wear this over it. So uh, I thought, yeah, hey, why not? Next up, hand sanitizer, because why not? You could technically light it on fire, but I'd say the same about the uh, isopropyl alcohol and the uh, iso heat thing. Oh, and then uh, I forgot to show this. A funnel, obviously, because uh, that makes it a lot easier to refill your windshield wiper fluid. Next up, toilet paper, which is always in my car anyway, in case I break down summer and, and then nature calls on top of it. Um, I wasn't going to put food in here because, like, I mean, unless you're driving through, like, a national park or, like, over mountains or something, and then that's a whole different set of stuff. I mean, I would just bring my entire emergency bag with, like, fire starting stuff and all that. 
Um, I mean, you can easily go without food for like one to three days without even feeling all that uncomfortable, but water, that's the real problem. So that's why I said, okay, coffee filters. But then I thought, well, what could survive the temperatures? Well, obviously fish, uh, that are like heat packed or they're like thermally treated once they're in here. And, uh, it's in soybean oil, which, you know, oil isn't going to freeze. I mean, even if these did freeze, which I don't think they will, I don't think there's enough water in here. Um, cause low water content is how you get such a long expiration date on these. Um, and the amount of calories in this is pretty good. Okay. Maybe not sardines and sriracha. I didn't quite catch that one. Let's <laughs> toss that one, but Hey, I'm going to go get the ones in mustard sauce, but, uh, let's see how, Oh, November, 2024. But I want to know how many calories there are. Let's see. I can't believe this is not labeled, but it's quite a bit. I think it's around like a thousand. It'll keep you going. It's, uh, you know, not carbs, which is not ideal, but if you go full keto mode and you start, you know, eating a bunch of soybean oil and protein, that'll keep you going. Next up, we got some like cheapo, but real thick, uh, fairly bright colored. So not red. Um, I think blue's the brightest green is close. Yellow's up there too. So really just not red and definitely not purple. Uh, they don't put off enough light or aren't picked up by the human eye quite as well. Uh, but these things are going to glow like crazy when you put them on the, the snow and blue kind of blends in with like moonlight and like, you know, that kind of stuff. So yeah, green or yellow is your best, uh, best bet. Now these will get a lot dimmer in cold temperatures, which is why I got three of them. And then you can kind of string them. You can tie them to stuff. You know, you can wear them as a necklace. I mean, there's marker vehicles. There's endless ways to use those. And they're about a dollar at the dollar store. Next up, I threw this in as an example of stuff you wouldn't really need in a winter bag, like a multi-tool, because you should just have this in your car anyway. If you don't, put it in your winter kit. Uh, just like a knife. Like, how, how would you not have a knife in your car? That's insane. <laughs> so that's just a cheap little, like, razor sharp one that dulls pretty quickly, but I got it for, like, three bucks. Next up, couple lighters, because why not? I mean, I always have those in my car, but uh, they would especially go with these. You guys know I'm a big fan of the cooking, uh, whoops, cooking chafers, or uh, people call them sternos, just like they call a marker, a Sharpie, that's the brand name. Um, I think this one's uh, Gordon, and this one's like uh, something, Choice Brands. Um, so these are about 419 watt output thermal equivalent for two hours. And these are like 292 watt thermal output for six hours. So these have a lot more chemical energy, but, uh, I burned like four of these to defrost my car one time when it was just this insane coating of ice that I couldn't get off any other way. And it set off the, uh, carbon monoxide detector after not all of them were burned and they were burning just pure yellow flames. So... You'd almost want to crack a window, but then that kind of defeats the purpose. This doesn't do a lot of thermal or like infrared, but the car was like 110 degrees at that point. So yeah, these do work. These are emergency heat right here. And if you get uh, four of them, you can cook on them. Cause that's, you know, what is that? Like over a thousand Watts. You could just put a, a cheap little, you know, aluminum pot that you found at the thrift store for a dollar. Uh, put that in here. I do intend to, it's not pictured here. And then you could melt snow in that. And then also, you know, filter it there. You can cook in it if you want it. So you can put a can of beans in here. I mean, I doubt that'll um, freeze, but uh, then you'd need a can opener. It's like, where are you going to be that you need food? Like, I, I, I think I drive between cities occasionally and it's like a 25 minute gap and there's small cities in between it. There's an exit every two miles. So it depends where you're driving. If you drive real long distances in this kind of weather and you get stranded and you're like, 15, 20 miles from anybody. Oh boy. <laughs> you should probably still have a cell phone signal, but I don't know. I mean, you never know what gets knocked out power, you know, the snowflakes themselves and the clouds can block all kinds of signals and stuff. So all this stuff, it might seem a little excessive. Like, you know, you may think, Oh, I just drive across the city, but it's just nice to have, especially the warmer stuff, especially, I mean, in a city, if it's like a mid-sized city and you break down at like two or three in the morning, well, Maybe nobody's open, including the gas station. So where are you going to walk? You're just going to try and like, what, break into someone's business or something. And like I said, what if the power's out? What if, you know, the cell phone towers are down? Boy, that, you know, you, you wouldn't feel like you're in civilization if nobody's around and you can't use any civilized technology. Well, then you might as well be in the woods. Because guess what? In that case, you're walking. So that's about it. I'm trying to think of anything uh, that wasn't pictured here. Obviously boots. Um, I only have currently one pair of boots, but I've got some like waterproof high tops that are steel toes. I might throw them in there. Usually if I know it's snowing, I'm not going to you know, throw on my normal shoes. I'm going to throw on boots anyway, but uh, you know, it's not bad to have just a spare of everything you could possibly put on. And if you have passengers, you know, go ahead and double that. Oh yeah, one more thing is a nice flashlight. This thing is absolute beast mode. This is one of those like seven, eight dollar Chinese imports, but I've got like six of these. None of them have failed and they're tough as can be and they are ridiculous bright and they're telescoping. So they, uh, you know, got a lens on there. They got a 
big old lens look at that and uh, i think about a three watt led and some of them say they're cree leds at this price i kind of doubt it but they are bright and boy you know in the dark and especially in the snow you're gonna find where you're going and this has a uh, high mode low mode flash mode and sos mode so there you go it takes an 18650 battery so if you're gonna throw this in you can throw in a couple extra little spares um if you're gonna do it do it safely as in like don't just leave them loose put them in a proper insulated pack yes these are sony mirada batteries are like 14 bucks a piece i don't think i'll be keeping these in sub-zero temperatures but i already have two of them in my car and they are using the most garbage like 12 year old recycled sanyo batteries that i got out of like a laptop that died but they do work and i have multiple of them so hey so i mean i guess i could touch on the things you shouldn't put out there obviously anything that cannot take wild temperature swings or being stored below freezing uh medications like any kind of like tylenol anti-diarrhea that kind of stuff it, it's really not supposed to be stored in those temps i can't imagine like an emergency where you'd be like i need tylenol well it doesn't do anything related to an emergency so i wouldn't risk it no matter what it's basically just a comfort thing but uh Boy, I can't name one single medication that can be stored below 32 safely for sure that you would need and come across, so that's pretty much out. But obviously a general first aid kit with some bandages and adhesive and that kind of stuff, you know, alcohol to clean a wound, you should just have that. That shouldn't be in a winter kit. That should just be in your vehicle kit. I've heard of people saying additional ammo. Ammo shouldn't be stored at that temperature either, but it can usually take it, especially in an airtight container that won't have condensation constantly on it. Otherwise, ammo you can't count on is completely useless. Um, I've heard of people saying, like, caffeine pills or, like, dry coffee, because that's, uh, what do you call it, uh, freeze-dried usually. Okay, I mean, yeah, I can mix up your own coffee with snow and then get a caffeine boost and go. I've heard of people saying electrolyte powder. That's interesting. Keep you from cramping up if you had to walk a long distance. That's not terrible. It seems a little excessive, but, I mean, it's not like I don't have some. Oh, and obviously not pictured here is a shovel. I've got a full-size shovel to get out of stuff, and I know you're probably screaming it at the screen at this point. You know, some kind of tire wraps or some kind of, like, boot studs where you can put them on the bottom of your boots and get spikes on them or, like, chains to wrap your tires to get out of a, a spot or... Um, I, I don't currently own it, but toe straps, you know, tie, tie straps, you know, those big thick ones, uh, ratcheting ones, or at least just like a, a couple thousand pound, uh, break weight rope. I, I just currently don't own that. And they are pretty expensive for reliable ones. So if I got to get pulled out of somewhere, well, I hope the truck or the tow truck or the bus or the whatever has a rope, which they usually do. But boy, I'd feel a lot better if I had one, but I, I just don't. So you guys should probably throw one in. I mean, I've been in so many ditches and stuff. <laughs> But now I've got really good tires, so that's another thing you should add to your winter kit list is better tires for your vehicle. Oh, and then obviously, like, alternate ways to charge your cell phone, the USB cables, all that kind of stuff. I forgot to mention that with the lithium cells, but it's kind of implied. But if you don't have the right cables, well, you aren't getting very far, are you? Oh, and uh, a weather radio would be kind of nice. I actually have one. It's not pictured here. It's out in the garage. I don't feel like going to get it, but it's a uh, hand crank. So you, you crank the side of it like that, generates a little bit of electricity into at least the capacitor, if not the battery, if the battery's not fried from storage, and then you can listen to the weather. So you know if it's going to get worse or better, especially if your cell phone isn't working or if you're out of range, because those weather radios should work almost anywhere. I mean, they broadcast those pretty darn far. So I know there was one more item I'm forgetting, but I sure as heck can't remember it, but, uh, well... <laughs> So a lot of people say, well, instead of these propane cylinders, which instead of them, really, <laughs> no, these are superior in every way. If this spills, it cannot light on fire, and this is too thick of a gel to spill. Real simple. So these, you just pop the top off, you get something under it, like a knife or something like that, and you just pop it off, there you go. If you squeeze it hard enough, it'll just come off, so you don't actually need tools. On these... Open them once ahead of time and then put electrical tape around it because no human being on the planet can actually open... Oh, wow. Oh, no, this brand is actually proper. Okay, I just got some crappy ones. But uh, I got ones that were so over-tightened or they were smashed down from being in, like, a, a stack that, like, Thor himself couldn't open these things. So just, just check and make sure you can open them free because uh, I had to take a mouse pad and wrap it around here and then crank it and I injured my finger doing it. So, yeah, some of these are, like, welded on. Well, I accidentally just slapped the heck out of that tripod and bashed my phone off of it, so I think we'll uh, call it on that one. But uh, if you have anything to add, I'm sure this isn't quite extensive, but it, it'll get you out of some situations, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, add it to the comments section below, and I'll see you guys next video.